Hey there, this is Seth Wires from Channel 9 coming to you from the beautiful town of Mechelen here in Belgium for Techorama 2016. And I've got a special guest, a speaker. Tell us who you are and what you do, bud. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Gunter, Gunter Verheyen. Mm -hmm. I live in, in Belgium, so I'm glad to be here in Mechelen. Uh -huh. I live in Antwerp, not too far from here. Um, I'm, I'm all about Scrum. So for these past three years, I've been working with Scrum.org, uh -huh. the organization of Ken Schwebel, one of the co-creators of Scrum. Uh, representing Scrum.org and Ken in Europe, uh, working on assessments that we have, the certifications, the courseware that we have, working with 150 beautiful trainers that we have across the globe, so that's what I've been doing. So Scrum is an interesting agile methodology, am I right about that? Is it yeah. an agile? For those that don't know about Scrum, could you give us like a, a really sort of soft introductory sort of overview of what it is? Yeah, well, Scrum, Scrum is very simple. Not easy, but very simple at least. So Scrum, like you said, is sort of the leading framework for agile software development. It's slowly become uh, the leading framework. So Scrum is all about working, organizing work in what we call sprints, mm -hmm. time box iterations. Um, that's about it. You plan an iteration, you do the iteration, you review the results at the end of an iteration. We make sure that iterations are normal. We call them sprints, mm -hmm. no more than 30 days. And what we see a lot is that people work in sprints of two weeks. So every two weeks you've got some piece of working software that you can, in, can inspect, adapt, change, change direction. So no heavy things, very simple. So for those that, that aren't used to dividing work out that way, how do you know what you can effectively put in a sprint? Because it's hard to estimate, right? How do you do that? Well, it, it is hard to estimate. And how do you do that? There's no sort of external authority that can tell you how to do that. It's depending on your context, your technology, your requirements, the type of application. So um, use the knowledge of the people that you have. In Scrum, we, we sort of see three accountabilities. We've got a Scrum Master, responsible for the process. We've got a Product Owner, responsible for, let's say, requirements and the business, the functional aspects of software. Um, the Product Owner is also the person managing what we call the product backlog. But then you've got the development team, seven, eight, nine people actually responsible for doing the real work. Ask them, work with them, use their creativity, use their intelligence. It's what we call bottom-up knowledge creation. Um, use the intelligence, creativity of the people that you have. Don't sort of go top-down telling them how to do their work. They will work with the product owner, they will find, about, find out about requirements, business expectations, and they will organize the work so that they can actually do something usable, workable in, let's say, two weeks. So you talked about sort of the sort of the time periods, two weeks, no longer than 30 days for sprints. Yep. There's a couple of interesting terms that you mentioned that I'm hoping you can sort of help us out with. You talked about the product backlog, and then you talked about sort of the roles. You have the scrum master, the product lead, was it called? Or the product, product manager, owner. Product, product owner, and then you have the developers. Let's start with the backlog and let's work our way through each of the sort of the roles and how they manage that backlog. Okay, cool. So if you would have to define Scrum in sort of one phrase, I would say it's a framework for complex product development. So it's for the development of complex products, right. often in very complex circumstances. And what we found is that you need no more than a couple of roles and some artifacts to actually manage that work. I see. So um, management of what we call requirements is done in what we call a product backlog. So it's a backlog for your product. A backlog meaning an ordered list of things you think you need to do. So how do you some order point them? In time. How do you order them? Well, that's something for that product owner role. I see. Because you've got a backlog for the product. You've got an owner of your product. The owner of the product decides what is most important to do next. And that is reflected in the ordering of the product backlog. I would certainly hope that a product owner looks at what is the most valuable for work. Uh, for the company, for the organization, but certainly also for the users, the customers of your software. So, uh, product owner, owner of the product, managing the backlog of the product. And then you've got a development team, they're going to pull in work into a sprint, a period of, let's say, two, three, maybe four weeks, two weeks. They're going to pull in work into that sprint, uh, consulting with the product owner, and certainly following the product owner's ordering of the list. And then they're going to transform, convert that, uh, those requirements into work they can actually do, actionable work. 
It's the next artifact of Scrum. It's called a sprint backlog. Uh -huh. So a backlog for the sprint. Um, and they're going to work on that sprint, on that, on that backlog in the sprint, with the goal of producing what we call in Scrum, a done, a releasable increment of software by the end of the sprint. That's interesting. And so I love the term backlog. It said this is working. You talked a little bit about the roles, but let's define the roles like super clearly. You talked about the Scrum Master earlier, but we didn't really mention them when it comes to the backlog. Can you tell us what the Scrum Master's job would be, he or she's job would be? Yep. So a Scrum Master is literally, it's a master of Scrum. We certainly hope it's a master of Scrum, meaning we hope that that person has a lot of mastery in Scrum, because the Scrum Master's role is just the Scrum process. Helping people understand the Scrum process, coaching, teaching them, educating people. It's what we call a servant leader role. So it's not a command and control role. Um, the most often mistake we find in the interpretation of the Scrum Master role is that people think it's a sort of project manager. It's not. The Scrum Master is all about Scrum. Explaining, teaching, coaching the process of Scrum. The Scrum Master has nothing to do with budget or scope. So Scrum Master, a master of the process, teacher, facilitator, coach of the process of Scrum. So that the development team, the product owner, but also the people outside of the Scrum team understand Scrum and know what it takes to actually enact Scrum. So is that an individual person or is it like one of the devs or one of the product owners or how does that work? Is it yeah. is this something you elect? I'm trying to understand sort of the social engineering of this. Yeah, well, I, 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 I love how you see it as a social role, that's yeah. good. Uh, so there's an important aspect to being a Scrum Master, that's teaching, coaching Scrum, the process, but that's something very tangible we expect from a Scrum Master, that is what we call removing impediments. Impediments are things that are blocking or slowing down the development team. Removing impediments uh, might be in infrastructure, technology, access to systems, whatever, but it's most often in the organization. Now, removing impediments and helping facilitate in the process, that's sort of a full-time role. Yeah, it, it feels takes, like it. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, that sounds like a, a full-time role. Yeah. You, you, can't sort of, you, you can't sort of divide it into sort of micro-tasks how much hour on this, how much hour on that, but it's in general full-time role. So I think it's a good idea to let a Scrum Master be full-time Scrum Master. But you know what, maybe in smaller context, maybe somebody from the development team can also be partially be Scrum Master. But you know, it's switching hats sometimes. You yeah. have to be careful. So often it's a full-time role, but I can't actually say how much time is spent on all those sort of subparts of being a Scrum Master. Now it's often what we see happening is, Scrum Masters can be sort of nominated by the organization, might work, often works, why not? But sort of the best way of getting a Scrum Master is often that when Scrum Masters sort of surface from the development team, from the Scrum team, hey, you would be a good Scrum Master for us. It feels like, oh, that, good, I'm proud that you sort of elect me as from the team. So there's multiple ways. In Scrum, we only define what we expect from a Scrum Master, we don't give any very strict um, instructions on who he should be, where he, she should come from. That's interesting, right? Because the way you described Scrum Master at the beginning, I thought it was just, okay, just this is someone that makes sure that the sprints are going okay in the back. But you're saying that their, their main role is to, one, work on the process, and two, make sure that the impediments are removed which sounds like a full-time job. Yeah. So let's just say in a typical Scrum Master's day, what are some things that he or she might do to do that? Well, we've got, we've got this thing in Scrum that we call a, call a daily Scrum. Okay. So um, in a sprint, uh, the development team is going to work towards creating a releasable piece of software by the end of the sprint. Now in, in highly complex work like software development, it's a very good idea to regularly inspect and adapt where you are. Also, even in, in a limited period of two weeks. That's why you have a daily Scrum, a Scrum that's happening on a daily basis. It's for the development team. It's for the development team to replan their work for the next, let's say, 24 hours. Okay. But it's also a very good point where a development team can surface all of the problems that they're suffering from. That's, those are the impediments. So at least once a day, a Scrum Master should have an update on what are things that are blocking the development team. What are things that they want me to work on? So at least uh, at least once a day you've got an update on impediments. Often Scrum Masters might work with Scrum Masters from other teams because impediments for one team 
are often also impediments for other teams. So it's a very good idea for Scrum Masters to work together and sort of join forces and address the organization, address managers, um, often release, integration, whatever managers, departments that are still in place and help them fix problems for their teams. So you talked about the Scrum Master, it's pretty clear what they do. You talked a little bit about the product owner and, and managing the backlog. Is there anything else that they do in their role? Well, um, th there's, there's an enormous growth potential still in the product owner role. So what we've seen over, because last year Scrum turned 20, did you oh, know that? Yeah, I did not know that. And that's amazing, right? So Scrum yeah, is on its way to turn 20 years. 21. It's amazing. Wow. So it's, it's uh, let's let's agree it's no longer a hype. Yeah, yeah. It, I, I, think, I think, yeah. They're yeah. going past the teenage years now, sort of growing up, maturing. One of the aspects that we see as very challenging in maturing the way Scrum is being um, enacted or employed is that product owner role. You know, Scrum is often introduced in organizations as sort of the new IT process. Uh, we're slowly outgrowing that ID because in, in implementing Scrum as a new IT process, people say, hey, there's a product owner role. It's got something to do with requirements. Oh, that's typically for an, an analyst, right? Sort of business IT, whatever analyst. And then, um, and then as an IT process, we start delivering software to the business. Mm -hmm. And the business in, in often starts getting a sort of hold on, hey, this Scrum process, fascinating. We want to be more involved. Hey, there's a role. That sounds a lot like a business role. And actually, product owner role is a business role. So uh, people from product management departments start taking over the, the product owner role. And that's a very good idea. Now, product management, Scrum is a uh, complex product development framework, so right. for developing framework, uh, products. Now there's a lot more product management work outside of, outside of Scrum. Uh, maybe financial things, uh, funding, uh, maybe thinking about release, marketing, communication aspect, maybe legal financial aspect. So there's a lot of product management work to be done outside of Scrum. So in general, it's a very good idea if the product owner for the development aspect of the product is someone from product management. I see. Where that a product manager partially plays the role of the product owner towards the Scrum team, stakeholder Scrum team, but also has a very good close connection to all those the other aspects part, of yeah. product management, finance, legal, and so those, those aspects. So uh, it's a very good idea if your product owner is also a product manager. But not all product managers will be product owners. I see. You see? So that's a very good idea. And that's, I think, one of the most important growth areas in the implementation of Scrum. People from business product management actually being the product owner and actually turning into the owner of the product. Not just a sort of distant proxy type of representative of the business, but actual people with skin in the game. And I like the fact that Scrum has that intersection with business. Because yeah. I think as developers, we often forget that even though it's cool what we were able to make, you still have to sell it and it still has to provide value to someone else. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's, it's often amazing to be honest that like, the HL Manifesto was, was established in 2001. Uh -huh. And one of the principles of the HL Manifesto is that business development people should work together day in, day out, throughout the day. And now there's a lot of companies saying, oh, we're, we're agile. And then, you know, there's still this sort of division between business and IT. I think the fascinating aspect with Scrum is that sort of we're totally agnostic on that division. Yeah. We define a Scrum team, product owner, Scrum master development team, and we don't care about the, that old division between business and IT, but that's again, one of the most difficult aspects, implementing Scrum upon your current organization. But it's fascinating, yeah. And, and I think that's also important in the product owner role. Um, I think it's very important also to listen to the development team sure. for the development problems that they're suffering from. It's also why the development team makes up the estimates and nobody else. But also getting that sort of business drive into the development team. And, and that's why a regular, um, uh, being regularly present as a product owner with the development team is extremely important because it helps development people understand the goals, the direction, what are we trying to achieve with our product from a functional point of view, not just a fancy framework, technical, yeah. technological thing. So it's good and it's all about collaboration. 
that the three roles in Scrum, they are peer roles. There's no hierarchy. They have different accountabilities. The accountabilities complement each other. Right. And we need, you need them all in place. So the product owner brings in the real business perspective to the development team. So I like that. We talk about the Scrum Master, the product owner. Is the developer's job just to start killing tasks off the backlog? Is there more to, that, to it than that? Well, that's sort of, that's why we never call Scrum a methodology, yeah. because that's sort of the methodological view on Scrum. Oh, you do a sprint planning, you plan, you plan two weeks of work, you put it in a plan for the sprint, it's called the sprint backlog, and then you just check off work from the sprint backlog and you're done, right? Was it only that easy? Yeah. But it's not, that's why we have the daily scrum, daily inspection adaptation. You can never capture everything in a product backlog and not even in a sprint backlog. That's why you need communication. Um, creating great software is all about daily communication, it's about collaboration. Just following a plan only for the two weeks will never work. Yeah. That's why you need the intense collaboration, daily inspection adaptation, changing the plan on a daily basis. So the outcome of the daily meeting, daily scrum, should be an updated plan for the sprint. Right. It's never a fixed thing. So there will always be collaborations. And um, you would hope that um, from uh, product backlog and some refinement that happens before the sprint, sprint planning, you would hope that there's still some open questions with regards to the actual implementation that needs to be handled and addressed in the sprint. That's why you want the development team and a product owner to talk together in a sprint. Do you see? It's a very dynamic way of working. Sure. That's why Scrum is only a framework. Scrum lays out some boundaries within which to work, but within those boundaries, it's all about collaboration, communication, and, and working together. For an organization that's decided we need to be more agile, we want to use Scrum, what are some things that they need to look out for when implementing it? Like, for example, there's dragons over there. You need to be careful with this implementation or with that. What are some challenges that you see organizations have? With well, let me start by saying that I like how you say that if companies want to become agile, how, do we, how would they use Scrum and what should they be looking out for? Because that's a very important step. Because agile is a great mindset. It's a set of principles. But I think Scrum is an incredibly powerful, tangible implementation of those principles. So that's, that's a good start. Scrum, doing Scrum in order to become more agile, that's a great start. Um, I think what we achieved with Scrum in those first 20 years is that we've been able to establish the idea of what we call cross-functional development teams. Development in Scrum is not just coding. It's doing all the work to create reusable software. Right. That is coding, testing, integrating, documenting, what we don't like to do, obviously, but still it's important sometimes. Uh, working with other teams, so that's very important. So development in Scrum is not just coding, it's doing all of the work that's required to produce reusable software. Uh, that's, that's certainly a challenge, but I think we got that idea across in those first 20 years of Scrum. We certainly have a challenge with the product owner role, still getting away from maybe some sort of command and controlish type of scrum masters. But I think there's also a huge challenge in um, getting management involved in scrum. Right. Because scrum has three roles and managers think, hey, what's my role in scrum? Because scrum thrives on bottom-up work, um, self-organizing development teams. But you know what? We never said that there's no role for managers, but the role is shifting. But Scrum has a focus on the product development aspects. So we didn't define the role of the manager, hoping that people would find out for themselves once they start implementing Scrum bottom-up self-organization. But growing an environment, fostering an environment in which self-organization can happen, that's a very important management role. Right. So there's a lot of managers still having sort of making, have to make the shift from what we call predictive management trying to get everything planned and detailed and exhaustively upfront from what I like to call empirical management. So updating your management style to the empirical process that Scrum implements. So inspecting and adapting instead of trying to plan everything. Working with product owners to know what's happening with regards to the product, features, requirements, release points, um, those types of things. Working with product owners, working with Scrum masters, um, to remove impediments, work with scrum masters to make sure that there's an environment 
in which people can not only build great software, but also develop themselves. Right. Grow mastery, and then as a manager use those outcomes of sprints every two, three weeks to get a, get a feel over what's happening, what's happening, what's not working, what is working well, instead of going for the old school detailed task reports and capability, capacity planning and stuff right. like that. So important thing still doing Scrum properly, the product owner role, uh, Scrum master role management, but I think the most important aspect of the future of Scrum, and I'll be talking today about what I call the future present of Scrum, the most important aspect of Scrum is still Scrum. Right. Building releasable, creating releasable software every two or three weeks. Software that doesn't have to be integrated separately anymore, tested anymore, no separate QA work, integration work, whatever. No, pulling all that work, reorganizing all that work, so it's done within every sprint. So I think the core purpose of Scrum was to help people build releasable software by the end of every sprint. I still, that, I still think that's, that's the most beautiful challenge we still have with Scrum. Because we can look at all those complexities around Scrum, I like to focus on Scrum itself. So I think the future present of Scrum is still Scrum. Yeah. Building actually releasable software where releasable means able it's it's got the ability to be put on the market without any additional development work that's awesome so I, we could talk about this for hours yes, it feels absolutely. like where can people go to find out more about scrum and to find more about your work well we've got uh, scrum.org has a website of course the organization is not only called scrum.org the website is also scrum.org so scrum.org go have a look uh, we've got some uh, resources in place. There's a separate website for the Scrum Guide. Have you ever heard about the Scrum I Guide? I haven't, no, no. Cool. So that's a document that was created in 2010 by Ken Schwaver and Jeff Salon, the two persons that in the 90s created the Scrum Framework. So they have documented Scrum in what they call the Scrum Guide. It's, called, it's at the website, available for everybody, it can be downloaded, PDF. It's translated in, I think, about 40 languages wow. right now. And it's only 16 pages. Oh. The essence of Scrum, 16 pages of so scrumguides.org. And there's the scrum.org website where people can go. So though what scrum.org tries to do is improving the profession of software development through Scrum. And uh, we've got uh, trainings, assessments in which people can assess their skills in Scrum, their knowledge in Scrum. There's courseware, there's 150 great professional Scrum trainers out there. Um, they can go to my website, it's called gunterverheijen.com. I've got a lot of blog notes out there on, on Scrum. I've published a little book on Scrum, Scrum a Pocket Guide, three years ago. Where I've tried to sort of build on the Scrum Guide, but actually uh, talking a lot about the purpose of the rules of the Scrum Guide. Got it. So there's a lot of stuff out there. There's so much. Well, thanks so much for spending some time. This has been You're very, very educational. For those that are wanting Scrum, you've got a lot of resources here. Thanks for watching. We're here in Mechelen, Belgium for Decorama 2016. My name is Seth Juarez. This is Channel 9. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Okay, thank you. Talk and Ken in Europe, uh, working on assessments that we have, the certifications, the courseware that we have, working with 150 beautiful trainers that we have across the globe. So. That's what I've been doing. So Scrum is an interesting agile methodology. Am I right about that? Is it yeah. agile? For those that don't know about Scrum, could you give us like a, a really sort of soft introductory sort of overview of what it is? Yeah, well, Scrum, Scrum is very simple. Not easy, but very simple at least. So Scrum, like you said, is sort of the leading framework for agile software. Hey there, this is Seth Juarez from Channel 9 coming to you from the beautiful town of Mechelen here in Belgium for Techorama 2016. And I've got a special guest, a speaker. Tell us who you are and what you do, bud. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Gunter, Gunter Verheijen. Mm -hmm. I live in, in Belgium, so I'm glad to be here in Mechelen. Uh -huh. I live in Antwerp, not too far from here. Um, I'm, I'm all about Scrum. So for these past three years, I've been working with Scrum.org, uh -huh. the organization of Ken Schwaber, one of the co-creators of Scrum, uh, representing Scrum.org software development. It's slowly become uh, the leading framework. So Scrum is all about working, organizing work in what we call sprints, mm -hmm. time box iterations. Um, that's about it. 
you plan an iteration, you do the iteration, you review the results at the end of an iteration, we make sure that iterations are normal, we call them sprints, mm -hmm. no more than 30 days. And what we see a lot is that people work in sprints of two weeks. So every two weeks you've got some piece of working software that you can, in, can inspect, adapt, change, change direction. So no heavy things, very simple. So for those that, that aren't used to dividing work out that way, how do you know what you can effectively put in a sprint? Because it's hard to estimate, right? How do you do that? Well, it, it is hard to estimate. And how do you do that? There's no sort of external authority that can tell you how to do that. It's depending on your context, your technology, your requirements, the type of application. So um, use the knowledge of the people that you have. In Scrum, we, we sort of see three accountabilities. We've got a Scrum Master, responsible for the process. We've got a product owner responsible for, let's say, requirements and the business, the functional aspects of software. Um, the product owner is also the person managing what we call the product backlog. But then you've got the development team, seven, eight, nine people actually responsible for doing the real work. Ask them, work with them, use their creativity, use their intelligence. It's what we call bottom-up knowledge creation. Um, use the intelligence, creativity of the people that you have. Don't sort of go top-down telling them how to do their 